further to the premises of the planning school we have just discussed there are some recent developments in the field you need to remember this point that planning school became one of the most influential schools in 1970s as i earlier mentioned shared with you all that under the influence of this school different planning departments are established in both governmental and non governmental organizations and this school furthered its mission and its philosophy over the different time spans and resultantly it was adopted by many and as it was adopted by many there was uh, further developments in the field and those further developments are now being discussed with you under the planning school you can take them as extension of the premises of the planning school or maybe further development into the planning school the so one of them is the scenario development or scenario planning this is the first technique which was actually started in 1970s and 80s this well deals with the planning school of thought and it actually provides another tool and technique to the strategists and planners in an organization one thing which is appropriate here to share with you all that in the planning school the aim is also to predict the future or make an attempt to predict the future so scenario planning is also a technique in which attempt is made to predict what may be happening in the future so this is made of the two words scenario and planning and i have just shared with you whenever there is a word planning it is answer to the three questions where we are where we want to go how we will get there scenario planning means scenario means situation actually under this technique in the organizations given the market conditions environmental conditions different situations are developed these if and then situations if it happens then what will we do so these actually situations are the hypothetical scenarios which are created by the planners and these are used to predict the future and to decide the future courses of action so this is a very very important and practical tool in the organizations known as scenario planning the second development in the domain is strategic control it is generally believed that the whole story of the planning school is revolving around one point that how to keep the control of the things and in the organizations the top man or the top office maybe a chief executive or the head offices in the organizations their main attempt is to find out a way to control the things so it is argued that the planning school or strategic planning is actually to control in 1980s there were the two scholars gould and campbell who actually studied the strategic control and they put forward three behaviors of the head offices of the organizations in their view the organizations essentially the large organizations use three ways to control their matters strategically and these are strategic planning financial control and strategic control there was would be another fourth one i'll talk about later under the strategic planning approach the head office of the organization does not delegate anything to the divisions or to the departments the aim or approach of the head office is to take part in the planning at every level of the organization and the head office directly controls everything mean rather strategies budgets activities everything is planned at the central level and it is then submitted or shared with the divisional or departmental levels only for implementation so this approach of the head offices is known as strategic planning approach it's a fully control approach the second is the financial control approach in which head offices of the organizations behave as they do not take part in the day to day affairs or the plannings of the organizations they grant substantial autonomy to their divisions and to their different departments as to the planning and strategy planning 
but they keep finances in their hands. They are least concerned with what the divisions and departments are doing. Their main aim is to keep finances in their hands and they ask their divisions, plan whatever you want, but you will have to seek budgetary approval for us. So they control the affairs of the organization through the financial control. The third behavior is known as strategic control. This is a behavior in which a hybrid approach is used. I mean to say hybrid mean at a certain level, autonomy is granted to the departments and divisions of the organizations. But at another certain level, the approval is required by the head office. For example, they contrary to the strategic planning approach, they simply ask their departments and divisions, please develop your own plans for the year to come or for the coming time or for the future and submit your plans for the approval of the head office. So in this approach, hybrid approach is used. I mean, amount of autonomy is also granted, but this autonomy is checked through the approval mechanism. So these are the three approaches under the planning school which are used to control the organization. And the latest approach is also put further by the Gould and Campbell and this is parental approach. They have also argued that in organizations, the organizational head offices use the parental approach. They treat their divisions and departments as their children and they, they interestingly, as you know that the relationship between parent and child is different at the different life cycle stages of the child. Same is the case with the head office and its divisions and departments. As the departments and the divisions grow elder, they grow older, they simply get more and more autonomy. But at the initial stages, they get more advice and control for their head offices. The next part is to discuss in recent development is the planning's unplanned troubles. Here just would like to mention with you that and after this point you will also be having the critique on the planning school. Actually in the 80s and 90s, it was felt that the planning school offers too much formalities, too much formalities. And it is very difficult in the ordinary course of life for any individual and organization to be bound by those formalities. It was observed that by fulfilling those formalities, an organization can certainly miss many opportunities. So a revolt was started against the planning school in 1980s and 90s and in which many organizations started reducing the size of their planning department and involvement of their strategic planning. So this phenomena is known as the planning's unplanned troubles. Thank you very much.